Hello guys. Welcome to Armour 3. Today we will be running a campaign called Antistasi. It is a persistent scenario that uh, allows you to run a guerrilla style war against occupying forces on the island of Morden. Alright, um, for this particular video what I'm going to be doing is demonstrating a nice little tactic that me and my friend have been using for the last couple of days while we've been experimenting with this scenario a, a good way of kind of getting yourself started without having to run a mock of the occupying forces now normally the way it's been advised is that you're meant to do some city deliveries uh, city supply missions to start with to kind of get some resources in for your uh, faction as you can see in front of you right now I have quite a few guys stationed at my HQ already that's because I actually restarted this scenario yesterday and uh, I've kind of used this tactic which I'm about to show you right now to kind of get myself a little bit of a lead against the occupying forces now one of the things that normally causes a bit of issue for new players to this scenario is the lack of decent weapons right at the beginning um, at the beginning you tend to have only a small selection of very weak weapons uh, because I'm running a slightly modified version of Antistase I'm actually running it in conjunction with the, R uh, the RHS mods which is kind of the Red Hammer Studios mods so I've got the United States Armed Forces and the Armed Forces of the Russian Federation as the two major sides in this current scenario uh, and as such when the player starts you only have access as the guerrillas, the freedom fighters, you only have access to two weapons one being a five uh, shot uh, rifle and the other one being a single shot um, shotgun basically a 12 gauge shotgun the problem with the shotgun is while it's incredibly powerful it does take a while after each shot to reload because you have to remove the cartridge, you have to insert the cartridge, etc. Uh, the five shot allows you to take literally five shots. Each shot is reloaded with a bolt action. It's incredibly slow. Um, and going up against sides that have semi-automatic or fully automatic weapons, so it's not ideal. So the tactic I'm about to show you now should unlock I say unlock will at least give you access to some decent weapons without much of a hassle now this should work pretty much for any map as long as you pick your location it don't really matter about your location but it kind of does help if you pick your location you start in location for your headquarters kind of reasonably close to one of these places that I'm about to go to and do the tactic I'm about to use then you might kind of get away with it on pretty much any map I haven't played any others so I've only played this one and this one seems to work very nicely for us so what I'm about to do is just show you the map to start with so over here at, at the end of this peninsula just here is normally where you spawn your base that's the default location and near the lighthouse now for this particular playthrough what I've done is I've moved our base up slightly closer to this building just here uh, the reason I've done that is because I have noticed on occasion enemies going down this road over here have been able to actually if they've got large caliber weapons they can actually shoot right across this gulf and clip people on this side of the road and in fact we have had vehicles come down these roads and actually fire right across into our base so putting a building on the left side of our base just gives it a little bit of extra protection um, we're not really worried about things coming from this direction because the only things that can come from here are kind of helicopters and planes and that's a whole different problem to begin with um, 
So, the tactic I've been using, and what my friend kind of originally did himself and showed it to me, and it's kind of like a really good little tactic, is you, you, there's one prerequisite for this. Well, two, really. One is make sure you're not carrying any kind of weapons. Make sure you're in civilian clothing so that you can go undercover and you need a civilian vehicle. And what you need to do is get a civilian vehicle, bring it back to your base. Preferably, if you can, get two. So get one, kind of, you know, deploy your tow rope, use an ace if you've got ace installed. Great, get a second vehicle, bring it back to your base. So you've got two. And what you want to do is you want to jump in that civilian vehicle without any weapons so you can go purely undercover. And then you want to go out of your base up towards this town just here. And just to the west of this town is a little resource point up in the mountains. And what is great about this resource point that we've found is every time we restart this scenario, it always does the same thing. And you'll probably find this on every single anti-Stasi map. You'll find that most of these resource points will have some kind of vehicle loaded with goods, like really good stuff. And what you want to do is use your civilian vehicle, go up the road, park up behind the vehicle, preferably away from any soldiers, just jump out, deploy tow rope really quickly to the civilian vehicle you're in, and then jump in that vehicle, and then drive the hell away. So effectively, you Grand Theft Auto in a armoured vehicle. And this one on Morden is particularly good, because the way the land kind of sits, the vehicle tends to be just here and you can drive right up behind it, get out and do the tow rope business which will automatically flip you out of um, undercover mode. But there tends to be no soldiers within eyesight of this. They tend to be either located in this building here, long building here, sometimes in the garage which is here or in this side house. If they're in the side house, they've got no line of sight on you because there's no windows and the door is always shut. The guys in the garage are elevated and can't see over the back of the truck. So even if this kind of like, you know, do the armor free kind of see through wall trick, they can't shoot you because there's an armored vehicle in the way. As long as you can run around and get in that truck's driving seat pretty quickly, you can get away with both these vehicles and a truck full of goods without ever engaging the occupying forces. And the great thing about this is that you're getting these weapons, not only are you getting an armoured vehicle, you're getting these weapons and you're not increasing your aggro with uh, the USAF. And that is really good because at the beginning, my god, that that aggregation and um, that aggro can really escalate very easily and the moment that happens you are going to have a very very difficult time if you haven't got decent amounts of money decent amount of protection at your home base um, it is something that with me and my friend have found playing the scenario that if you go and get those guys over about 20 you are going to really regret it very quickly because they will come at you with tanks, they will come at you with helicopters, they will drop Chinooks with like absolute loads of guys and unless you've got an absolute arm with like AT and AA sitting at your base with bunkers and barricades you are going to lose your headquarters which is one of the reasons why we've opted to keep our guy uh, our base kind of on this peninsula where it is because we found it's actually quite a defensible position compared to the rest um, but I'm just going to show you my little trick actually live so we've got a truck here already now I have have loaded it up with some of my personal effects but obviously I've not got anything on me other than a baseball cap oh actually 
let's get rid of that. Um, so I've got no kind of weapons on me whatsoever. So let's just have a quick look. So I'm going to drive out of this town. Or out of our headquarters. But it's my town really. My little town on the hill. And we are going to put our... Got earplugs? No. <laughs> so we're going to go down the road, onto the main road, then over into the town. I'm going to show you this little trick in action. Just so you know it works. And I've already done this three times today, so I know it does work. And I've got quite a few guns out of it. It's a good way of uh, unlocking like things like M4s quickly without actually sh firing a single shot. And the other thing is, every time you steal a truck, because you, you're not technically shooting anyone, next time you go back to the area, it spawns a new one. So what you do is just rinse and repeat. Now one warning, especially for this map, I have noticed every time I've restarted the scenario so far, along this road, normally about here, no, a bit further down, so just on this bend down here, so around about here, you tend to get a, a roadblock with a patrol. So there'll be a patrol coming over the over the hill, sort of like in that general direction, uh, coming by that building, just directly in the centre of the screen right now, and you'll have a roadblock just here. And what I found is um, obviously sitting. No, you can't sit very well there, but <laughs> can't sit all right. So why not? Here we go. Okay, so. The rocks right to the right side of the screen on the left side of the road. Um, you tend to be able to take a quad bike there to begin with, kind of go prone and to take out the patrol. Now, okay, this could go wrong. Is this guy gonna go around me? Yeah, he is. That uh, could have gone very, very wrong. Yeah, so um, obviously when you're playing this scenario, if you're playing it on this particular map, be aware that sometimes you do... What's this trap do? Where's the drum? Okay, apparently it is. Right. So let's just um, try to get out of here. Because obviously I'm causing a bit of congestion on the road. So just bear that in mind, the first time you load this scenario up, you'll probably have to deal with the um, roadblock first before you can do this little trick. And yes, you can loot the patrol and the roadblock. I don't recommend it until you know for a fact that you've cleared the area. So I tend to just see it, we're in the town, so I'm going to take this road. You can see why I've taken out some of the wolves with the armoured vehicle. Okay, there's a guy with a go-kart banging into a wall. Good job, mate. Oh, shit. Um, enough to see here, officers. Okay, that could be problematic. See, they're not engaged me because as far as they're concerned, I'm an innocent civilian just out for a drive. There we go. Oh, that's a nice one. That's the one with the turret on it. Now, let's just have a quick look around. There should be a guy. Oh, that door's open. That's not a good sign. Got civilians running over there. Go 
I'll be very quick about this. So, pull the vehicle up there, jump out. Under cover, it will drop off almost immediately. Yep, there you go. Attach and run. And we're in. There you go. So, we've now grabbed it. These guys have realised what's going on. Too late, guys. I'm off. And yeah. Okay, let's drive a bit quicker. Now, I'm probably going to get shot at quite a bit here, but because this is an armoured vehicle, it shouldn't really matter. Bullets will just bounce off it. It's the RPGs you've got to be a bit worried about. Okay, we're going to go down to the main road and take a right. Try not to ram my towed vehicle into any walls. Oh god. And there we go. We're away. So we're just going to take this directly back to the base now. If we just slow it down and look in the inventory, there you go. All those goodies for absolutely nothing. And you can just, once you get back to the base, unload the vehicle, store the vehicle, rinse and repeat, just keep doing it. Now this is where taking out that roadblock is important because obviously if you hadn't and you were just driving the civilian vehicle to go out and then drive an armoured vehicle to come back you'd obviously be engaged and because it's a roadblock they'll have anti-tank weapons um, so you'd run the risk of losing everything so that's why you've got to deal with those guys first of all. Here we go. Slow up now. <laughs> I know what these vultures are going to do. They're going to run over to the vehicle and try and nip the M4s before we've even got got them uh, into the inventory. So let's just get rid of that. Leave the vehicle back here. And get this up against the arsenal and get it into the inventory. The best way to do that is just drive past the guys and come from the opposite direction. And there we go. And it's all in. So we just check the inventory. Absolutely nothing in that, so we can just go. Okay, so this is going into the faction garage. 
Well, I've got no damage to that vehicle, so in theory, I could just get in it and just do the exact same thing again. In fact, I'm just going to do that just to show you that I'm not bullshitting. It won't take for more than a few minutes. Just for completeness, this will work each and every time. You can do this for hours until you unlock those weapons. And then once you've got those weapons, at least you've got something decent to fight with rather than struggling with these single shot rifles. Because to be honest, though the, um, what is it, the car, yeah, the 98, the 98's a decent rifle, but problem is it's so slow if you get rushed you are gonna have a nightmare you gotta switch to the pistol I mean things get so much easier once you get the M4 I mean even the AKs to be honest or the L1A1 I think it's called the Fowls Fowls are really good It's a semi automatic, well, it's just a semi single shot, but you've got a magazine of 20, so you're just popping shots out one after each other. I just like the M4 because you can switch to full auto if you need to. Well, no, it's, it's first fire, not full auto. It's the A1 equivalent that's just full auto, I believe. Flat. Uh, see the undercover mode still on. Oh, I could steal that truck. No, no, that's not the greedy. Oh, hello. It's getting a bit tight. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> right. Um. Awkwardly parked. I say, mate. Are you kidding me? What's he done? Come on, move your ass. Oh, okay. Don't drive at. See, these guys are just ignoring me. And they won't ignore me on the way back. There we go, it's another truck up there already. Ready for theft. I'll make sure there's no one near to it when we steal it. So there's no one in that building there. And strangely enough, the uh, rocks are back. I've got to do this quick because you get flagged as being off road. Oop, okay. That's a bad turn. Floyd rope. Prop Grand Theft Auto start. We're going. We're out. And again. Look at that. Whole stack of weapons. So I don't think you want to see me drive back to the base. Uh, you know how this is going to go. Lots of people shoot at me. Um, I'm not going to run this guy over. Or these two. Hello, guys. Are you kidding me? Shit. Shit.
what? <laughs> oh my word. What in God's name was that? <laughs> you can literally see that from him. <laughs> oh my word. What the actual fuck? So apparently, armored vehicles versus vans. Not a good combination. <laughs> that was an armored vehicle with about six inches of armor versus a transit van and, or a long wheelbase van and apparently that won. That's absolutely insane. Oh well. Good job I brought a backup vehicle. Aha! Uh -huh. Well thank you for watching guys. Uh, hopefully that's been informative if not a little bit amusing. Because <laughs> I didn't expect that either. But yes, uh, you can see what I'm doing now. Just steal a civilian vehicle, go up the hill, grab the military vehicle, bring it back. Might be a little bit more difficult now, but hopefully you won't have the same problem. Alright, thank you. Goodbye.